Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. After 37 years in power, Robert Mugabe on Tuesday resigned as President of Zimbabwe. Martin Zwakinu joins me to discuss what this means for the country. Hi Martin. Hi Chanel. Emerson Munangagwa will be sworn in as Zimbabwe's new interim president on November 24. What do you know about him? Well, Emerson Munangagwa he has been uh, a member of ZANU PF you know, for much of his adult life. He joined the party in the early 1960s and he underwent military training in uh, Egypt before proceeding to China for advanced military training. And then he came back to the country where he engaged in acts of sabotage, you know, as part of the struggle to get uh, rid of uh, British imperialism. But he got arrested and uh, was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. That was after his, uh, I mean, initially he had been sentenced to death, but uh, on a technicality, the sentence was uh, uh, commuted to 10 years in prison. That's when he met Robert Mugabe and uh, thus began a very long mental protege relationship between the two. When he came out of prison in the early 1970s, he went to Zambia. In fact, he was deported because by that time his parents were living in Zambia and he completed his uh, uh, law degrees at the University of Zambia, after which he went into private practice. But then, at, at about that time, Robert Mugabe was released from prison and he went to Mozambique, where he very quickly managed to establish himself as the new leader of uh, ZANU, which is now ZANU-PF. And uh, at independence in 1980, Emerson Munangagwa was appointed Minister of uh, Security. And that was followed by further ministerial de deployments. Uh, I think uh, his second portfolio was uh, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs. And he went on to become Minister of Defense. And at one point, he was a uh, uh, Speaker of Parliament in Zimbabwe. But uh, in 2014, he became the Vice President of Zimbabwe together with uh, Pele Keza Lampoko. So the two of them were Vice President to Robert Mugabe. Yes, that is the man. What can we expect economically in the post Mugabe era? Okay, if you look at the history of uh, Emerson Munangabwe and the association that he has had with uh, Robert Mugabe over the past, uh, I would say, 40 years, or maybe 50 years actually, from the time they were together in prison, one would be tempted to think that uh, it's a question of uh, you know continuing with what has been happening in Zimbabwe all these years. But uh, I tend to think that he is probably going to adopt, to take a, pro a completely new direction to the direction that Mugabe was taking uh, the country along. I will explain the reasons for, you know, for, for coming to that conclusion. He has a, a reputation as a proponent for engagement with uh, the Western world, you know, America, Europe, and so on and so forth, which is very unlike Mugabe. To Mugabe, the West was, uh, you know, the devil incarnate. He did not want to do anything with the West at all. So now that Mnangagwa is, is in charge of Zimbabwe, I think what we should expect to see is some kind of opening up, you know. The West is going to be uh, maybe more involved in Zimbabwean affairs. And obviously the Chinese, they've been in Zimbabwe all along. You probably know about uh, the mining companies that are operating the diamond fields in Zimbabwe. There is Anjin Investment and then there is Jinang uh, Mining from China and a few other companies are in Zimbabwe, I mean, apart from those that are in the diamond uh, in the diamond fields. But what happened a few years ago, probably two, three years ago, was that uh, Robert Mugabe decided to nationalize the diamond mining industry in Zimbabwe and that affected uh, the Chinese mining companies as well. And obviously, relations between Zimbabwe and China got strained, you know, uh, big time. But uh, Munangagwa, uh, being the person that he is, he wants engagement with uh, the international community. I am sure he is going to to reverse, you know, that particular policy by Robert Mugabe. So going forward, I think going forward, I think what we are going to see is that uh, the West is going to become more and more engaged with Zimbabwe. I think in terms of uh, support, budgetary support, in terms of investment, and so on and so forth. In other words, Zimbabwe is not going to continue to be isolated as has been the case, you know, up until now. Is Zimbabwe's infrastructure good enough and does it have enough skilled people should international investors decide to put their money into Zimbabwe? Okay, I will start with the uh, skills question before coming to infrastructure as well and so forth. 
for all his sins, what Robert Mugabe did was uh, to ensure that you know Zimbabwe had a skilled workforce right from the time he came to power in 1980. You probably know that Zimbabwe is up to, uh, to, to its eyebrows in uh, international debt. You know, some of that money was used for social purposes, like training, apart from you know health care, so on and so forth. So now, when we are talking about skills, Zimbabwe, I think, is teeming with the skills people. You know. It to meet the demands of uh, foreign investors should they decide to come to Zimbabwe now. Of course, uh, during the last few years, I'll probably say maybe during the last 17 years, we have had closures of industries, you know, factories, mining uh, companies, and so on and so forth. And uh, so those people are out of a job now, but they gained the, that you know, the crucial experience you know, which would be needed should uh, foreign investors come to Zimbabwe. And now, coming to the issue of uh, infrastructure, yes, it's not as good as it might be in some cases, but the road network, I think it's, uh, it's in a reasonable condition. If you would think of uh, Zimbabwe's location geographically, you know, it's, uh, there is Zimbabwe in the middle, and then to the south we've got uh, South Africa, and then to the north we've got countries like Zambia, the DRC, and so on and so forth. Now, it has always been a link, you know, for exporters from the DRC, for instance, uh, to, you know, to foreign markets, you know. They transport their minerals and so on and so forth via Zimbabwe, which is, you know, evidence that, I mean, in tr so far as the road network is concerned, we do have decent infrastructure. Perhaps uh, a link to the question of infrastructure, one might also want to speak about, uh, you know, other necessities for industry, like uh, electricity you know that uh, as we speak right now, ESCOM is in some kind of uh, generation over capacity. You know, we are producing electricity, but we cannot use all of it, you know. So if investors are going to come to Zimbabwe right now, there is going to be no shortage of electricity. Zimbabwe will simply exp uh, import from South Africa. So on that score, I think, you know, Zimbabwe is okay. However, all this would depend on the economic policies that Munangagwa is going to to adopt going forward. I listened to him last night as he spoke to his uh, supporters at uh, ZANU PF headquarters in Harare. He emphasized uh, reviving the economy and he emphasized uh, job creation as well. So he's alive to the fact that you know he has got to do something about the economy. He's got to do something to create employment for Zimbabweans. Now what that means is that uh, he just has to repeal some of uh, the uh, legislation that w that was put in place by Robert Mugabe, you know, essentially what we are talking about is property rights. When you look at the past 17 years or so, that's when white farmers specifically were dispossessed of their land. That's when uh, owners of mining companies were told, you know, one day that, you know what, for you to be able to continue operating in this country, Zimbabweans must own 51% of your of your companies. You know, obviously, that, that puts off investors. So Munangabwa has his way cut out for him. He has got to reverse all those policies. However, we mustn't uh, forget that Munangabwa is coming in as interim president. In other words, between now and July next year, when uh, you know, Zimbabweans go to you know, when elect uh, the, 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 the next government. So one never knows really you know, what is going to be Munangabwa's preoccupation between now and July next year. It might be that he wants to consolidate his position uh, within Zanupi so that he wins the next election. So if he gets pre preoccupied with that, then what, I'm to what I've been talking about might not uh, materialize at the end of the day. Thank you. You're welcome. That's Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.